G'day headbangers and welcome to Dozel's Metal Works. Welcome back my fellow metalheads to another edition of Dozel's Metal Works. And this week, back to the 80s, the best era ever. And I mean ever for music, movies, TVs, everything. And uh, yeah, we're going to go to basically the end of that decade and go with 1989. So yeah, end of a great era there, of that wonderful decade that we all know and love. Okay, so number 10, we're starting off with Save Yourself by the Macaulay Schenkel Group, also known just as MSG. A uh, bit of a listen to this album, wasn't as good as I remembered to be honest. But we go with the track that I do love with a passion, uh, Anytime, great power ballad there. Then Bad Boys, and number three is Get Down to Business, which they obviously didn't do for that album. Just kidding. All right, at number nine, we have Trouble in Angel City by a Lion. Now, if I'm correct, this was their second studio album. <coughs> Um, not as good as their first one, but still pretty decent. Uh, top track for this one was Hungry for Love, Stranger in the City at number two, and Lock Up Your Daughters at number three. <coughs> okay, number eight. We have a great album here. Uh, granted, I only really know half a dozen of the songs on it, but oh well. Flying in a Blue Dream by Joe Satriani, the guitar virtuoso himself. Um, yeah, but top tracks for this one is Flying in a Blue Dream. Uh, number two, we have Back to Shalabal. And number three, Big Bad Moon. And an honourable mention to One Big Rush. Um, now, people who don't know what Shalabal is re reference to, if I remember, because I'm a bit of a geek, Shalabal was the wife of Norrin Rad, who ended up becoming the Silver Surfer in the Marvel Comics. So I do know for a fact that Joe Satriani is a big Silver Surfer fan. Just look at the album for Surfer with the Alien and his Chrome Boy guitar, which is based on the Silver Surfer. So there you go there. All right, number seven, we have Slip of the Tongue by Whitesnake. Uh, great album, this one. Gotta love these boys. It wasn't until a few years ago that I found out that Whitesnake is likely British. I actually thought they were Yanks, but they're Poms, so there you go. Anyway, number one, we have Now You're Gone. Number two, we have The Deeper The Love, Giggity. And number three, Fool For Your Loving. Definitely great album there. This one I've actually got here is a special 20 or 25th anniversary edition, so it's pretty sweet. <clears throat> okay, number six, we have Skid Row with their self-titled album. Uh, obviously... Debut album for these uh, rockers. Uh, number one is I Remember You. Number two, Youth Gone Wild. And number three, who happens to be my friend Mandy's personal favourite from these lads, 18 and Life. You all knew how much of a pretty boy Sebastian Bach was, but you know, because of his issues, I guess, <laughs> they won't let him go back near the band. I actually saw them live many, many years ago, and they're actually pretty damn good live with the, the current singer at the time. So, yeah. Okay, number five. We have The Real Thing by Faith No More. Now, love this album from these boys. Haven't really gotten into any other albums they've released, you know, but their greatest hits is pretty decent, so, yeah. So, I've got four standout tracks for this album. Uh, War Pigs, the Black Sabbath cover. <laughs> it's an absolute banger. Then we have Epic, which <laughs> song pretty much <laughs> lives up to its name, actually. Uh, Falling to Pieces at number three. And number four, From Out of Nowhere. Uh, I suppose honourable mentions will be Woodpecker from Mars and Surprise You're Dead, so yeah. Alright, number four. Ah, uh, now this guy. Uh, legend. Uh, Atomic Playboys by Steve Stevens. Now, I don't know if you know who Steve Stevens is. He's a guitarist. And he was Billy Idol's guitarist for many, many years. Probably still is, as far as I know. 
not sure how many studio albums he's done, but this one is, what's that word I'm looking for again? Banger, that's right. Yeah, okay, so another four great tracks on this album. Atomic Playboys, title track, guitar solo of that is an absolute rip snorter. Uh, number two, Desperate Heart, bit of a ballad there, but fantastic. Power of Suggestion at number three, which I actually think they might have used in the Ace Ventura movie, I think. So, yeah. And uh, track number four, Warm Woman of a Thousand Years. But, yeah, that whole album is actually classic hair metal album. And who knows how much hairspray they used on that album. If you look at the video clip for Atomic Playboys, it's just two cans each for every dude in that band for <laughs> the hair, I reckon. It's shocking. Anyway. Uh, number three, uh, the reason I didn't put these guys at number two is even though this is probably one of the best hair metal albums ever in the 80s, the guys are known to be a bit, a bit of a dick sometimes, especially in recent years with their controversy, so yeah. But it is Dr. Feel Good by Motley Crue. Another banger of an album, this one. Uh, number one has always been and always will be my favourite Motley Crue song. Kickstart My Heart, which sometimes I like to call it, Shit Start My Fart. Um, number two, Same Old Situation, another great track there. And of course, Dr. Feel Good at number three. Uh, so, yeah, but the whole album is pretty good. I'd probably say Honorable Mention would actually be Rattlesnake Shake. That's, that's tracks a freaking cracker, that one, so yeah. Okay, number two. Uh, even though I've listened to this album probably about half a dozen or so times, the whole album is great, so trying to nail down the top three tracks for me was actually kind of difficult. But I've actually managed to find four tracks, and that is Practice What You Preach by Testament. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's the third album from these boys. Um, a lot of people probably would put these guys in the big four if, when it comes to thrash metal. Uh, saw a poll the other day on one of the Loudwire pages on Facebook and they were saying, now that Slayer's hung up their boots, or strings, whatever you want to say, who would you put in as that fourth band? And pretty much everyone said, 90% said Testament. So I went, well, there you go. Take that. So number one, we have Practice What You Preach. Number two, we have Time Is Coming. Uh, number three, we have... Um, Perilous Nation, and number four we have Confusion Fusion, and yeah, that's really really good that one. So yeah, right. And number one, uh, so it's really interesting that there's no Priest, no Maiden, no Metallica this year. So a lot of these other bands have a chance <laughs> getting into number one, but we have quite possibly one of the best metal albums I've ever heard. I think I've put in my Dozer's Vault. And it is Blessing in Disguise by Metal Church. Um, first album, if I'm correct, with Mike Howe on vocals. Rest in peace, Mike. Legend of a vocalist there. So, obviously, the whole album, again, is an absolute banger. Uh, track number one is a song that got me into Metal Church all those years ago. And that is Badlands. Great song, love it. Yeah, cracker, rip sorter, you know, what can you say? Um... Then the number two is Rest in Pieces, April 15th, 1912. Now, uh, depending on how well you know your history, that is the uh, day the Titanic went down quicker than Paris Hilton. Maybe not that quick, but that's the year that, uh, yeah, the Titanic went down, which is probably one of the biggest tragedies of all time, and it still does suck, so yeah, that's what that song's about. Number three is Anthem to the Estranged. Bit of a lengthy song, but oh, the power, the passion in the, oh, I don't know, the, the depth in that song is through the roof. Fantastic. Uh, honourable mention, though, would be uh, um, of Unsound Mind. The reason I chose this one in particular, it's actually based on the Edgar Allan Poe story or poem, whatever you want to call, call it, Telltale Heart. So we all love Edgar Allan Poe because that guy was a freaking damn good writer but uh, yeah so my friends that is this top 10 for 89 now a couple of little things um, during the week we saw that Lincoln Park 
is back. So welcome back Lincoln Park and they released a brand new track uh, and with their new co-singer Emily Armstrong. Now like a lot of bands that come in with new singers hey Judas Priest and Maiden went through it when they went through their temporary singer stage um, you know there's a bit of a backlash hey everyone I've talked to has listened to the song said she's really really good fits the band even sounds very similar to freaking Chester in a couple of uh, ways but yeah you know rest in peace Chester of course very sad how he lost his life now yeah all I can say look if you have issues with this and having a, a bitch and a moan about it you know you're probably a ray gun supporter and we won't go into how what I think of ray gun let's just say she was in the wrong Olympics and the Olympics she should have been in are now currently on. Now, on that note, my amazing metalheads out there, until next time, mosh on.